Hello, Yins. Any Yinsers in the house? Well, good to see y'all. Y'all, I guess it's Yins, but great to see y'all today. God's got something good, amen? Well, hey, don't forget to sign up for life groups, and we don't have another service after this one, so have some tacos on your way out. And if you are parked on the lawn, please don't burn out when you leave. Some guy in a Jeep burned out, and he just left big ruts in there, and then our lawn care people look at me like, who did this? And i like, I don't know. So please don't do that. And uh, don't forget, we want to have at least 2,000 people on the night when we, when we go to the park. And so what we're going to do on the 15th of that weekend, 15th of September, that weekend, right now, get your little cell phone out. And you don't look at me like that. You always have your cell phone out. Get it out right now. Put in your day timer online and put four o'clock on the 15th there will be no saturday night service there will be no sunday morning service at 9 30 and 11 15 we will be in one park together with awesome new songs dropping food trucks over there delicious smoke barbecue volleyball games cornhole tournaments uh so come at four we're gonna have a great time as one family come on say as one we want everybody to see there's people that come Saturdays that they never see you and you never see them. And then there's people that come to the 930 religiously, you never see them. So we want the church to come together as one. One more time, say as one. As one. Hey, so the question is what's next? And that, that, that most uh, put in the box question was, why is it so cold in here? Are you still cold? Is someone cold today in here? I'm going to, we'll, we'll go, someone run to the bookstore. Hold your hand up. If you need a sweater, we'll get you a sweater. But uh, thank God it's not cold. It's just perfect. So here's the question. Ready? I'm asked this a lot. And I want to, I want to break it down to you for today. And what I don't want to do is uh, in the last two services, I didn't have tons of time at the end because I, I kind of wanted to preach what the Holy Spirit said first and then give statistics secondly. So if I don't, get to that point I think I will some of them but I'm, I'm just go like that right through them and so there's a guy named John there he's the CFO here there's a guy named Matt I think he knows I'm, there's some staff members and there's some leaders that know about the vision but I want you to have clarity because here's what the Bible says it tells us in Habakkuk 2 2 God answered to the problem that Habakkuk was dealing with he said write this write what you see everyone say what you see write it out in big block letters so that he can read it on the run one translation says write it on a billboard so people can see the vision he says the vision message is a witness how many know just the vision and the influence God has given us is becoming a witness to people why while other churches are emptying out while, while other churches are just, the, the tolerance is 70 and over. And how many know it's, it's cool to see 70s and 80s and 60s and 40s and 20s and teens and children? And we got a baby on the front row today. Come on, buddy. So, so it's very interesting that he said, this vision message is a witness pointing to what is coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. It doesn't lie. It seems slow. If it seems slow and it's coming, 22 years. Wait. It's on the way. It'll come right on time. Amen. How do we as believers at Grace Life Church, that God's called us to the east side of Pittsburgh. Someone, I'll say east side, you say strong side. East side. Come on, how many believe that? Amen. If you're from North Hills, we still love you. If you're from South Hills, we love you more. But we just don't want to drive through all those tunnels to get to see you, amen? And sit in traffic, because that tusks our pa my patience. But we know that God's called us to do something specific in the east side of Pittsburgh to establish his covenant in the earth. And so as we look at this, I love what it says in Matthew 9:35. It says, And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom say it with me the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people today is is, is god moves us to a whole nother level as a church 
I want you to understand that when we know Jesus, when our vision is to reach the lost at any cost, to make fully devoted followers of Christ, to preach the good news of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, Jesus said, is not here or there, but it's within you. So when you receive Jesus, he comes as the king and he brings his kingdom. And for years we've been praying in many Catholic churches. And, and, and you know, I was that way when we went to Mother Good Council and then transferred to St. Gerard's in the 70s. And I, as a little kid, could say it with my eyes shut while I was sleeping. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. as And have given us the day our daily. And it didn't mean anything. But man, this is a powerful prayer Jesus gave us as a model. And he said, hallowed praise be thy name then he said this is the priority why jesus came that his kingdom would come in the earth and so if satan's the god of this world you would use an illustration and say how come bad things happen to good people like we taught last week go listen to it because god's kingdom hasn't come enough you would say how come how come god doesn't stop that hurricane satan's the god of this world and god put you here to stop the hurricane how many believe that? See, we got to get churches that understand this because we haven't grown up enough in the body of Christ to realize that God gave us His authority, His wisdom, and His Word, and His Holy Spirit, and He told us, go take dominion. Satan causes earthquakes, hurricanes. He's the God of this world. He's having people shoot people. He's having darkness. He's having immoral issues. He's having rapes and murders. And he said, I put you here because the kingdom of darkness needs to be inspired and penetrated by the kingdom of light. Come on, where's the kingdom of light? And the kingdom of God is within. Come on, how many know the kingdom's in you? So if God's going to get any glory, if, if someone's going to stop the hurricane, someone's got to stand out on that eastern shore, which there is and which we're here because there's no, no time and space in God. So when we say as a church, what we decree and, and what we say cannot happen, whatever we decree to be bound on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. So we tell the hurricane, Dorian, we call it by name, and we say, you desist now. Did Jesus say, peace, be still? Yeah. Come on, say, peace. peace. Be, still. be still. I don't want anybody that's on that eastern seaboard to have to lose their home, to have to lose their children, to have to have a boat to go around and find the stuff in their living room. God's given us the authority in the earth, and we have to take that dominion. We have to take that authority. So, Father, help us by the Holy Ghost to see and know your purpose and your will. That we, as the vision of Grace Life Church, can manifest. We just don't talk about it, but we manifest it in our lives and we walk it out because whoever finds God finds. You know, it's very interesting that God wants to establish his kingdom and his covenant in the earth through you. So, as I was thinking about the vision, here's how it operates and here's how it works. There was a guy by the name Elijah. Elijah was a guy that prayed, James 5, at the end of the book of James. And he prayed that it would not rain, and it did not rain three and a half years. Then he prayed again that it would rain, and it did rain. But in the book of Kings 18, he prayed. And in this prayer, people weren't really serving God. They were actually serving a God called Baal. And they had weird ways that they served Baal, and they did actually... Some connect that they did human baby sacrifices to Baal. They had all these crazy things. They would do these dances where they cut themselves and screamed and hollered. And their God still didn't answer. So Elijah says, why, why halt you between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. And if Baal be God, serve him. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have an afternoon sacrifice. We're going to have evening sacrifice. The afternoon, we're going to pray to Baal. And if he doesn't answer, that means he's dead. And if my God answers, that means he's alive. So they called out for their God, Baal, to answer. And nothing happened. And he made fun of them. And he said, maybe your God's asleep. Maybe he's away. Maybe he's traveling. And then nothing happened. They got upset. And then he comes at the evening sacrifice. He says, I pray to the Father God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who answers me today by fire. And instantly the fire God came down, licked up the sacrifice, the water, the stones, and everything, and God answers prayer today. Amen? So this thing's gone. He says, take those prophets down to the valley of Kishon, and I want you to slay every one of them as the law demanded. 
And then here's where, here's where I want to talk for a little bit. Because Elijah, he gets ready to go pray again. Because there's been a drought for three and a half years. Come on, say a drought. And when there's a drought for three and a half years, people don't eat, people suffer, people go hungry, people go thirsty, you can't grow stuff. A drought back in Bible times is a huge problem. And so, as it is today, so he tells them this. He says, after he kills these prophets, he makes an announcement. This is the way I believe the whole kingdom works. See, the kingdom has a way that you access the kingdom because the kingdom is in you. So the kingdom is access and operated by words someone say words so if the kingdom is activated and operates through words that elijah stands up to give an announcement he gives an announcement and, and what he's going to announce is the drought's over but I, I like the progression that it happens in because this is the way the kingdom works he teaches us how the kingdom works in the old and new jesus came remember if you read through the new covenant which we'll be doing a series this fall he said Jesus came to preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God. Where's the good news of the kingdom of God? It's accessed through the King Jesus, and it lives on the inside of you. So the kingdom of God is within you. Everything you need for life and godliness is already in you. How many have healing? Come on, how many have joy? How many have peace? The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So what God tells us is everything you need for life and godliness is in you. So if you say, I'm having manifestation of depression, I say, announce I have joy, and that depression will leave. Say, I didn't feel anything. I don't care what I feel. I care what the Word says. I want to get in agreement with the Word has announced in my life. He said, by the stripes that wounded me, you are healed and made whole. That's the announcement. Come on, say the drought's over. If you're broke as a joke and you're financially in a debacle and you have lack, God says, I wish above everything you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He's concerned about your soul being prosperous. Your mind, your will, and emotions prospering through the Word of God, through mind renewal. So he says, if you've been in a financial drought, come on, say the famine's over. If you got a doctor's report that said, you know what, you, you have cancer and you're not going to live maybe three or four months, you got to say, well, wait a minute, i got something to announce to that report. Jesus is my healer. See, and here's, here's the interesting thing about how the kingdom works. People that say they're Christians but don't know how to operate in the kingdom, they have all these keys but don't know how to use them. And God says, the, the progression of the kingdom, even in salvation, is you announce that you agree with what God did. What did God do? He sent his son Jesus to the cross. He died, he rose again. And in Romans 10, verse 8 through 10, he says, whoever agrees with what's been done and says, I believe in my heart and I agree with my confession that Jesus is my Lord, he announces that and has salvation. Well, wait a minute. So God says, you have an announcement, you have a decree that you need to make. And that's where it starts. Everything is activated with your words. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation with the heart man believes. Say it out loud. The drought is over. So Elijah said to Ahab, I love what he did first. Listen to what he does first after these prophets. He says, up on your feet, eat and drink and celebrate. I love that. Come on, say eat, drink, and celebrate. Well, wait, why, why would you do that? That seems like the last thing. There's been a famine for years. No, no, the man announced the famine's over. Ready? I got something for you today. Come on. Say the addiction's over. Come on. Say it's a new season. You, you say, well, I don't see my children serving the Lord. He didn't say go by what you see. He said you start with announcement. All my children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. I don't care what I said. Well, he's still addicted to heroin. I don't care what you see. You say the drought is over. My children are taught of the Lord. And I bind Satan in the name of Jesus. I announce to you, devil, whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven because thy kingdom has come in me. Come on, say the authority's in me. It's Christ in you that's the hope of glory. So he says, celebrate. Look at this. Rain is on the way. I hear it coming. So what, look at the progression. He made an announcement. 
You got an announcement you need to make. What's your announcement? I'm done with you, cancer, because of what Jesus did. Some are sitting here today with a manic depression spirit, and you got to say, let me tell you what, today I have joy, and I'm not going back. I announce to you today, the kingdom of God is in me. There's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You know what? You say, I have marriage problems, Pastor, and she's mean, and he's a jerk, and he's this. Stop announcing the wrong things. Start decreeing the right things. I love my wife. I love my husband. Well, he's not saying, he, well, he's saved. Call things that be not as though they were. Decree a thing and it will be established unto you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your path. Say, it all starts with my words. So listen what he says. He says, then he went after he prayed. He said, meanwhile, he climbed to the top of Carmel. He bowed deeply in prayer and his face between his knees. Then he said to the young servant, on your feet, look toward the sea. He went and looked and reported back, I, listen to this, I don't see a thing. Keep looking, even seven times. You say, Pastor, how's this work in your life? And many Christians are in this debacle of trying to live by sight instead of live by faith. They say, man, I wish my husband would just serve the Lord and sell out. And their prayer sessions become complaining times. I just wish we could have a new job. We just don't have enough money. And so we call that, some people call that prayer in church, but that's just complaining. It was with the Israelites. It was criticizing and complaining. And so what happens is, he says, here's what I want you to do. I prayed, listen, and I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Rain is coming. Eat and drink. Get ready. It's coming. No, it's been a drought for three years. Trust me, I made an announcement. Rain's coming. Prepare for rain. He says, now, servant, go look. He's up there praying. He goes, look. He goes to the first time. He says, I don't see anything but a really white drummer. I said, okay, that's got a lot of soul. Okay. He goes back. He says, I don't, I don't see anything. Check it out. He keeps praying. He goes again. He said, go again. Some will say, go again. You went back to the doctor for an x-ray, and you thought surely the report had changed. And the doctor says, not much has changed. I see just a little change. And you get upset. And, and God says, go again. And four times. And then five times. And then six times. The six times he comes, he says, hey, man, I know you prayed for rain, and I know you think things are changing, but they're really not. And he just looks up in consistency. He says, go again. The seventh time he goes, and he comes back with this report. He said, all I seen was a tiny, tiny, tiny little cloud way out over the sea the size of a man's hand. That's all I see is a man's hand. And the prophet said, get up. He put his raincoat on. He said, come on. I see a little, little, little change. You know what God says? The progression is start speaking the word. Start decreeing the drought's over. You're going to hear something in the spirit. In Acts 2, 17, he says, this is where we're living right now. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy and dream dreams. Old men, old men will see visions. Young men, uh, actually young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. And I'll pour out upon my servants and my handmaidens in that day. I'm going to pour out my spirit. So God says in Pittsburgh, in the east side, there's a sound of abundance of rain. Come on, say, I can hear it. You say, all I hear is the Steeler season starting. Wait, 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 wait. Are you listening to the things of the Spirit? So you got an announcement to make. We're living in the greatest days ever. This is the greatest time to be alive. God is moving on His church. He's pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. So He says, this is what I'm doing. And He says, go ahead, get up. It's going to rain. So then we see the profession. We see Job 22, 28. You shall, all, you, say me. Look at your neighbor, say you. You shall decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. So listen to me today. You're not waiting on God any longer. God's waiting on you. God's waiting on his kingdom to come in you, and he's waiting to manifest his kingdom through you. Pastor Ray sits down there and teaching us the word in 1973. And for years, 40-some years in the kingdom, I failed to see many Christians be able to manifest 
We can talk about it, but we don't see the results that we want to see. And God says, no, no, now's the time to see results. Now's the time to get answers. In fact, he says, yes, indeed, Amos 9, 13. It won't be long now. God's decree. Come on, say, I decree. I decree. The famine's over. He says, things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. One thing so fast upon the heels of the next, you won't be able to keep up with it. Everything will be happening at once. Everywhere you look, blessings, blessings, wine pouring on the mountains and the hills. Listen, listen, listen what's going on right now. In the spirit, in the world there's a big debacle. In the world there's a big problem. In the world there's all kind of issues. But we're not in the world. We're not of this world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're in the kingdom of God. How many know in the kingdom of God there's righteousness? How many know there's peace? There's joy. So I started praying about the 2020 vision of what God wants us to do. And he said, this is what 2020 vision has to look like. It has to look like the founding fathers of the church in Acts 2. And in Acts 2, he goes on to tell us, verse 40 says, excuse me, 38, he said, change your ways, change your life. Turn to God and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus. And the forgiveness of your sins, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is targeted to you and your, say, me and my children. But also to who are far away, whoever in fact our master God invites. So I asked the Lord about this and he said, okay, so the Holy Spirit's for your grandchildren and your children and you. So you can manifest the kingdom to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit, so you can manifest the kingdom. But he says, notice he's generational. I was in many churches in the last couple of weeks, and it was interesting to me that, that several of the churches I went to, there was people that were over 60, they were over 70, they were over 80, but I didn't see any 40-year-olds. I didn't even see any 50-year-olds. I didn't see any teenagers. I didn't see any babies. I didn't. So that must mean that in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God, it means that people have failed to think generationally. So I, I went to a mother good council with my mom down in Homewood back in the six, late 60s, early 70s. And then my grandfather went there. Then we moved to Penn Hills and we went to St. Gerard's. And, and I look at the churches and I see they're empty. And I see there's no young people. There's no life. There's, no, there's like 20 kids born into this church last week. Amen. Come on, Aaron. What about Hannah? Yeah. Hannah Petrucci, a woman of God, right? And I'm going, children manifesting, children, toddlers, teenagers, next generation, 20-something. Well, well, so God says for our church in 2020 vision, you have to think about, you have to think about, this isn't about me. I don't get what I want. It's not about me. It's about, what about that child and that grandchild? It's nothing cooler to see grandfathers here and then their, their, their children here and their grandchildren. Three generations now. How many know that's a cool thing to see? We can't forget it because church is not about, it's not about. We have to continually think about it, Grace Life Church, for 2020 vision. What about the people after us? I'm saved. I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm out of debt. I'm winning in life. I got a good marriage. I'm believing God. All my children are taught the Lord. I'm believing for their mates. I'm believing for this. I'm believing for that. But what, a, what about the next generation coming after us? And so God, in His Word, He says, you have to be generationally minded. Verse 40 says, For the vein a long time, urging them over and over. Look at this. Get out while you can. Get out of this sick and stupid culture. How many know this is a sick and stupid culture out here? But in the kingdom's a wonderful culture. You know the world will kill you. They'll steal from you. They'll destroy you. They'll eat your lunch. They'll, they'll, they'll steal your idea. They'll take your invention. They'll hurt you. They'll destroy you. They'll call you racist. They'll act racist. They'll be divided. They'll, they'll, they'll kill. They'll steal. They'll destroy. They'll be immoral. They, they, they care less about you. But you know what? The Bible says, here's what I want. That day was added to the church. 3,000 were baptized. He says... Those who signed up were committed themselves to life groups. Can I have an amen? The teaching of the apostles, they had a meal in common. How many are eating with some other believers regular? Anybody? Come on, is that it? I have at least 10 meals a week with other believers. You say, that's why you're getting fat. Well, whatever. But check this out. He said, teaching of the apostles, they had a common meal together and 
prayers, he said, and everyone around was in awe. Signs and wonders were done. The believers, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. The believers lived in wonderful harmony. You see that? See that? Say harmony. So in the kingdom of God, there's unity and harmony. That's why I love the culture at Grace Life. It's the kingdom culture. If you gossip, you don't belong here. <laughs> Come on, say amen to that. If you slander, you don't belong here. If you talk about other people, you don't fit here. Bye-bye. Let me say this. If you're racist, you can go somewhere else. Amen? I know there's a lot of white folk here, but you still can't jump or dance. Come here. Come here, PJ. Come here. I'm going to have you jump. Come here, brother. Come here, brother. Now, 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 now isn't this beautiful? Here's the deal. Say unity. They're going to squeeze me today. No, no, don't, don't, don't. Oh, okay. But, but doesn't this look good? Look, we could moon people together right here, us two. Now, now listen, seriously, look at these guys. Aren't they beautiful? These are like my real brothers. My brother Kev, I'd die for this guy. Even though he, I think he'd die for me. It hurt somebody for me. But, but no, seriously, these are beautiful brothers, aren't they? And there's our attorney. I ain't going to ask her to get up because she's phenomenal. She's, she's Blair. She's beautiful. She's great with child, amen, and she's blessed. But, but what I say to you, perfect harmony, you, you, you say, some guy, I was eating with one of my brothers, and a guy walked up to me. He goes, what you doing with the white dude? <laughs> Why are you hanging out with him? You know what? There can't even be a hint of that in the kingdom of God. Amen. Come on, bring me a Korean, bro. Come on, get up here. Bring, here, Jeremy, come on. Here, bring a white kid up here. Bring a, a, really, a really white, almost red kid. <laughs> Vinny, get up over here. Bryson, get up over here. Wait, wait. Come on, come on. Someone say diversity. Diversity. I'd ask to bring a pregnant woman up here, but no, not today. No, no, say diversity. Diversity. Now, now listen to me. Listen to me. Uh, this church has to be a place where we protect. I just talked to Jamar, one of our chefs. I said, we, we are going to do business together. We're going to get along together. We're going to love one another. And I said, the world has to see we ain't playing games. We really would give our lives for each other. And you know what it is? It's not a skin problem. It's a sin problem. You see, you feel me? It's a, it's a sin problem. We, we, we need each other. So what is that? Thank you, guys. Go sit down, man. Come on, give them a round of applause. Say, say listen, listen. Say diversity. Come on, say diversity. Come on, over here, say diversity. diversity. Say harmony. harmony. Full harmony. So you know what's that mean? Here's the kingdom culture. We want this church to be like heaven. That can't exist here. That, you hear me? That can't exist here. There can't even be a hint of it here. Division and discord and racism, it can't exist here. And you have to be the carrier of the kingdom of culture that says, when someone says, yeah, how do you feel about that? You like that? I said, every tribe and every kindred and every tongue and every color of skin, that's what heaven's going to be like. And God wants us to manifest heaven on earth. We have to be able to manifest heaven here. I don't, well, there'd be perfect unity in heaven. No, Jesus trying to get back into the earth. Where there's unity and harmony in the church and there's generosity. He goes on to say there was generosity. People sold their goods as people had need. They gave to one another with, with a generous heart. They had worship. Come on, give me something, dude. What do you give me? Come on. Creed, what do you got, man? Nothing? You, you, yeah, they had worship and praise. They had worship and praise happening daily that brings us into the presence of God, which brings heaven to earth which touches heaven, our praises touch heaven, and they change earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. They were generous with one another. They loved to be together. They loved to sign up for life groups. Jesus was in a small group, right? They loved to break bread together. And it says, with generous hearts, daily was added to the church such as should be saved. Say amen to that. So I look at these scriptures, and I see what the church looks like. There's a hunger for the Word. There's a hunger to worship. There's a hunger to be together. There's a hunger to grow together. There's a hunger not to be isolated. So as I do this in, in this thing called church, and I see that God wants the drought to be over for all of us, and I go, okay, Lord. 
So the next question that people have asked me was, so pastor, what's the next step? You see 2020 vision. There's a multiracial, multi-generational, multi-talented, worshipful, touching heaven, changing earth, soul saved in every service. Ten people gave their life to Jesus last night. Eight people gave their life to Jesus on Wednesday night. Another 10, another 15, probably another 20 in this service. And I'm like, well, wait, when we move to a bigger barn, all of a sudden we can have three and 400 people getting saved in every service. Amen? Right? So I'm going to believe that's important. So wait, why is it so important that you can manifest the kingdom? Because the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. The kingdom is Acts 1-8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses. If you can manifest the kingdom of God, you can be a witness. Because Jesus went about teaching and preaching and healing. And he told them the good news of the kingdom. The kingdom has come to Pittsburgh. Now, it's been here for years, but many people... It's like me in my home theater room when my kids ask me to turn on a show or get on Netflix or get on the PlayStation. I don't know what I'm doing. I look confused. I can't get the bass on. I can't get the switch on. I don't know where the amp is. I need my 11-year-old to come manifest. It takes him one minute. It takes me an hour, and I still can't figure out what's going on. And that's kind of where the church has been. I got all the stuff. Here's all the power. I got the amp. I got the subs. I got the big screen. But I don't know how to work it. Come on, say amen to that. Say, get it on. We have to learn how to manifest the kingdom. So, so God says to me, he says, I want you to manifest. And so we have this, this, this barn and... We have a taco truck out there, and we have a donut store over there, and we own a trailer park back there, and we own 60 acres up there. And then someone just gave us six more last year, and then seven more over there. And I said, Lord, how, how do I manifest? Because if, if the kingdom has to manifest, I have to be able to have Jesus in my marriage. I have to manifest him in my kids. I have to manifest him in my finances. I have to manifest him in my joy level. Come on. What, what, do you, what do you see the kingdom as? Righteousness, the state of being made right. Peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. And joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, smile. Come on, smile big. Say, I have joy. Do you have all the joy you'll ever need in you? Say, but you're manifesting depression because you don't know that the joy of the Lord is your strength and it's already in you in the kingdom. So God, here's what God tells me. He says, here's, here's how I want you to manifest the kingdom on the east side. Come on, say strong side. strong side. On the east side, I want you to go take the land. I want you to make provision. I want you to move forward. And so you ask the question. So when are we moving? Because we talked about it last year, and we talked about the building. We showed it up here, and we, we shouted about it. Architect drew stuff about it. But what happened was when we went to ask about the building, we